Welcome back to the week eight edition of my weekly NFL Pick'em. We're gonna jump right into Thursday Night Football and here's the scenario for this week. It's the Kirk Cousins revenge game and this is like having your ex over to your house for a dinner party right after she broke up with the one that she left you for. Meanwhile, Kirk and his new boo, they've had a rocky start to their relationship, but things are definitely as good as they've ever been right now at this very moment. Now, how Kirk Cousins responds in this game is going to go a long way in determining his legacy with the Vikings. He's not the toughest guy mentally and that's why he struggled on the road and kind of why the Redskins felt comfortable letting him walk in free agency. A fourth straight win for the Vikings would tie Kirk Cousins' longest winning streak of his career and really to me that's just one more thing to add pressure to the scenario for him. So if he chokes this game away to his former team which is a shell of the squad that he left them as then all Super Bowl hopes should be thrown out of the window for this Vikings team along with him and then 8-8 eight and eight and 9-7 and seven and a game short of the playoffs will forever be known as just the Kirk Cousins special because that's what you're going to get with this guy. I don't think that Kirk chokes completely in this game, but I also don't think it's going to be the thrashing that a lot of people are expecting. Keep in mind that Adam Thielen isn't going to be playing this game, and if somehow he does, then he's not going to be much more than a distraction to pull coverage off of Stephon Diggs, because he's going to be much less than 100%. Vikings win 21-13. Before I get into the Sunday games, I want to take this time to tell you about this fantasy football app that I've really enjoyed playing the last few weeks. Overlay Fantasy Sports has a new revolutionary start and sit game for daily fantasy sports that is really simple to play, which means it's easy to win. And after this rough start that I've had this year to picking games, I've definitely needed the ego boost. Basically, you pick one of these groups to join. I like to do this one because it costs $2.50 and there's actually a ton of spots left. So feel free to join in and pick against me for a chance to win one of these payouts. You basically make similar choices to the ones that you're going to probably making your redraft leagues of who you would sit or start based on their matchup for example this week i'm starting jared goff against the bengals over tom brady against the browns and then matt safford over josh allen stuff like that if you get all 12 picks right you win the progressive bonus which increases each week that someone doesn't win it this week it's over three thousand dollars for the group that i joined for only two dollars and fifty cents and if you even finish in the top 10 percent you'll get a nice payout compared to your buy-in go to www.overlaydfs.com to join me this week or head over to the app store and download the app the link is in the description and in the pinned comment big thanks to them for sponsoring this week's video Back to the picks, we've got Seahawks at Falcons. Now, I tried telling you guys that teams don't fear CenturyLink Field like they used to. The Ravens came in and clawed the Seahawks' eyes out, or whatever it is that birds do to other birds. I think Earl Thomas's presence really messed with their mind when creating their offensive game plan. Earl Thomas didn't really do anything outrageous in the game, but I think they were expecting him to try, and he didn't have to because they didn't want to give him the chance. But the Seahawks team needed a rebound like the Falcons to get their groove back after that, and this might be what puts the nail in Dan Quinn's coffin. The Falcons have already started shipping out assets for picks with Mohamed Sanu getting a second in return from the Patriots. I think that trade is good for everybody involved because Sanu gets a shot at a ring because if you can't beat him, join him, right? The Patriots get a jack of all trades weapon on offense. I'm sure that he'll throw a touchdown pass at some point during the season, maybe even in the playoffs. And then the Falcons get the last pick in the second round. See what I did there? And don't forget, Matt Ryan wasn't a walking boot after the Rams game. And if Matt Schaub has to start this game, then it could get ugly. Seahawks are only favored by three and a half. So I'd be willing to throw a ton of money at that bet, but you better do it before Matt Ryan is officially announced out and the line moves drastically. Seahawks win 33-14. Eagles at Bills. If Doug Peterson doesn't try to guarantee this one, the Eagles might have a shot to get things back on track. This Eagles team is terrible right now, and the injuries aren't helping, but they're not the sole cause of the slow starts getting them into trouble before the second half. Now, the Bills, they're very predictable. I knew that they let the Dolphins hang around just long enough to regain control in the fourth, because that's just how they do it in 2019. In fact, that might be a Josh Allen thing. It's just his winning style. Against lesser teams, that'll work, but when you're up against a talented roster like this Eagles team, you need to put them away early on. The fact that both these teams get off to slow starts should help the Eagles stick to their game plan and avoid getting one dimensional. But man, this team feels like it's just imploding from within. If it wasn't Alshon Jeffrey making these comments anonymously, then it was definitely still somebody in the locker room of the Eagles criticizing Carson Wentz and the coaches. Then against the Cowboys, Nelson Aguilar barely even tries on a deep ball. The offensive line gets absolutely dominated. I give the Bills a lot of criticism, but one thing is for sure that this team plays as a unit. When it comes down to it, I think that the Eagles are missing Deshaun Jackson, opening up this passing game, and until he gets back, this offense is going to struggle, especially against a defense like this Bills team. Bills win 23-20.
Chargers at Bears. I've got a message for Melvin Gordon on behalf of all Chargers fans. How dare you? This Chargers roster is too good for Phillip Rivers to be going out like this. And Keenan Allen's healthy as far as I know, so I don't know what's going on over there. I do think that Derwin James is probably the most dearly missed player in the league right now because their defense is just not nearly as good as I anticipated that it would be this year. The Bears season is also slipping away before their eyes, and it's mostly due to the Trash Biscuit. Or Trash Biscuit. I'm not sure which nickname I like more for him yet. That Saints defense has exposed some really good offense offenses this season, so I think that the Trubisky blame might be a little bit overblown for this one game, but I also had really low expectations for him coming into the season, and if you want to talk about a quarterback seeing ghosts, Trubisky was probably seeing ghosts against the Saints. But it's this Bears defense that I'm actually kind of disappointed with. They should have made Vic Fangio just the highest paid defensive coordinator in their league instead of letting him go to Denver, because that situation isn't really working out for anybody. If they can't take advantage of this sad Chargers team, then they might be too close to average on both sides of the ball this year. But hey, Marcus Mariota to Chicago in 2020 though right i'm calling it right now bring him in at least as a backup because his uh college coach is there and just seems like a really good fit but this chargers bears game it feels like a toss-up honestly but after the criticism the trash biscuit took all week i think that matt Nagy gets back to running the ball don't forget to run the ball once in a while dude and then put in a successful game plan for this offense to get back on track bears win 24 17 Giants at Lions. Daniel Jones is experiencing some rookie growing pains, and that should have been somewhat expected. I know as a football optimist, it's easy to get caught up in the possibilities of a young quarterback just crushing the expectations and not hitting that rookie wall, but it comes for everybody eventually. In fact, it's better for him to go through it now because he has a chance to turn it around by the season's end and go into the offseason with some positive energy and momentum. And then, hey, Saquon Barkley's back and he's gone again. Honestly, I'd consider shutting him down for the year once the Giants are close to officially eliminated from the playoffs. Let Daniel Jones learn how to run the offense without such a dynamic running back to bail him out and next year will be much easier for the both of them then you're also keeping the miles off of saquon barkley's body because it just doesn't make sense to put them on a running back that isn't really going to be leading you to the playoffs now the vikings they exposed the lions defense a little bit last week but the giants just don't have the personnel to do that to them golden tate should be motivated to have a big day but the giants offensive line doesn't match up well with this lions defensive line and i see a bounce back game for the lions lions win 27 19. Raiders at Texans. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this game because I'm just not sure if the Raiders defense is that bad or if Aaron Rodgers just woke up feeling dangerous last week and took it out on them. We're about to find out that answer real quick because Deshaun Watson and company are one of the top passing attacks in 2019 and the Raiders will be down. Gary on Conley who they actually traded to the Texans maybe is a secret agent this week who knows. But last week Deshaun Watson got robbed of an MVP moment when the refs called him down in Indianapolis when he was extending the play and refusing to go down and then threw a touchdown to DeAndre Hopkins. I'd be pretty pissed about that. It was a big changer in the game. It was early enough to where the Texans could have made up for it, but I do expect Deshaun Watson to be a little bit pissed off and respond with another torching of this Raiders defense. Six and a half points seems light for this one and might be my most confident matchup of the week. And I feel like that's saying something because I've been a supporter of the Raiders this season and I still think that they have potential to do well. I just don't think this is a good matchup for them. Texans win 38-24. Jets at Jaguars. So that was pretty ugly on Monday night, huh? But with the Jets providing us this gem from Sam Darnold admitting to seeing ghosts. Seeing ghosts. Seeing ghosts. Seeing ghosts. Seeing ghosts. It really just made the whole thing worth it for all non-Jets fans. And I love how the Jets are diverting all of our attention away from how badly they played and just focusing on how much Sam Darnold got screwed by someone from NFL Films giving the green light on airing that clip of him to basically being in over his head. Not saying that he can't get it done. Remember, he did throw a pick six on his very first ever pass attempt when he was playing in Detroit against the Lions, but he came back and won that game. But you see a trend here, these primetime games, big moments for him. This is the kind of stuff that people are worried about when they're drafting these USC quarterbacks because it just feels like they're not accustomed to dealing with adversity because life in the NFL is not all California beaches and sun. But I gotta say, hearing this makes me wonder how many more things like this are said on the sidelines you just never get to hear. I really think that this slipped through the cracks or whoever made the decision to let this be aired from NFL Films, maybe they didn't see the full impact that Sam Darnold's gonna have to deal with now for the rest of his career. Maybe he was just too into the, the spooky season of Halloween here, but it's pretty awesome. And the problem for Sam Darnold's is that we did hear and everybody heard it and I just don't see how he escapes this on the field like he's gonna hear this every single week at some point because some defender is gonna use it to taunt him on a crucial third down or I don't know as soon as he makes even the slightest mistake people are gonna be like oh darn on you seeing ghosts were you guys able to rattle him he said at one point on the ESPN broadcast that I felt like he Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, that's the man. Boogie man. That's the boogie man. It's real. <laughs>
You talk about the kind of the continuity of your defense. We're up front. You guys are putting sorry, pressure. Sorry, sorry. He really said that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, how were you guys able to rattle him for that's, him to that's see? That's crazy for him to say that. It is. That's, that makes it real. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. What does that? What's that mean to you that he's seeing ghosts? I mean, that's. I can't believe he said that. <laughs> see how he responds moving forward. He's got a pretty easy schedule to finish out the year, but we could be looking at the next generation of Andy Dalton, and that's not a good thing. Meanwhile, the Jaguars spent a sixth round pick and got a quarterback with almost too much swagger and confidence, if that's even possible. Gardner Minshew is like the anti Sam Darnold right now, and even though they struggled a little bit against the Bengals last week, I expect this Jaguars defense to continue the trend of shutting down the Jets, and then all eyes are going to be on Sammy Darnold and his response to the Ghosts. But I'm just not comfortable picking the Jets until I see the respond from the shellacking from the Patriots. Jaguars win 20 to 13. Bengals at Rams. Andy Dalton is playing his role as starting tank quarterback to perfection. He's playing well enough to not get benched, even though maybe last week he should have been benched, but then he's playing poorly enough that he doesn't cost the team their hard-earned draft stock. This will allow him to be brought back potentially as the 2020 bridge quarterback, and he can earn that final year contract money. The Rams were rejuvenated with that Jalen Ramsey energy and should absolutely dominate the Bengals in London. There's nobody in this offensive line that can block Aaron Donald, but as we've learned in the past, anything can happen in London. Bengals head coach Zach Taylor was with the Rams last year and probably knows the team inside and out, so he might actually be able to scheme a game plan to neutralize Aaron Donald a little bit and also help the defense prepare for what they're going to see from this Rams offense, but they're just going to be outmatched. Rams win 30-20. to Cardinals at Saints. The Cardinals handled business in New York against the Giants, and even without David Johnson, you've got to like what you've seen from the Cliff and Kyler experiment in year one. It's still a talent depleted roster, but they're going to continue to catch some teams off guard. The Saints, man, I know it took me a while to get on board, and I've always known the talent on this team was crazy good, but it's the coaching that has just completely transformed the identity of this team from being a high flying finesse team to a gritty defensive team that grinds you down. I'm telling you, Drew Brees needs to be watching Teddy Bridgewater's film to see how to run a conservative offense. The only hesitation with this team moving forward will be how they respond to the quarterback change that inevitably comes. The Cardinals are built to produce offensively like the Saints used to, and I think that the Saints will be able to bully this finesse Cardinals team. Saints win 27-17. Buccaneers at Titans. Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota began their careers playing each other in week one of their rookie seasons, and here we are five years later, and guess what? One of them has been benched for Ryan Tannehill of all people, and the other is still fighting for a chance to stick around another year as their starting quarterback. Tannehill actually quarterbacked the Titans to a victory against the Chargers last week, but it's really the defense that should get most of the credit. And holy wow, Jeffrey Simmons is a medical marvel, y'all. And what a steal for the Titans in the draft. This dude tore an ACL while training for the draft, and it's October, and he's back to disrupt disrupting backfields, but this time in the NFL. In his one game, you could argue that he's been more impactful than Quinn and Williams. I would typically expect the Titans defense to force Jameis Winston into mistakes, but there's something about Bruce Arians coming out of a bye week that has me thinking that this will be a well-organized game plan and that the time off will help Jameis be a little bit more wired in than usual and get this Titans defense on their heels early on. Buccaneers win 24-20. Panthers at 49ers. This is one of the best matchups of the week. It might be another low scoring one as these physical defensive units try and shut down the effective running games of the opposition. Last week, the 49ers went to FedEx Field and played in one of the sloppier games that you'll ever see, but man, those pictures of the players sliding around are some of the best shots you'll ever see. And if I was a 49ers fan, I'd be getting the one of Nick Bosa blown up for the man cave because that's an awesome picture and it's one for the ages. But with the elite defenses canceling out the elite running games to an extent, it's going to depend on who can move the ball through the air. Jimmy Garoppolo is the quarterback that I trust more, but even with Emmanuel Sanders, who I don't think will be quite up to speed this week, the receivers on this 49ers team have not been consistent and they're not very dynamic, especially not compared to the ones across the field that Kyle Allen is throwing to. Either way, I don't expect great quarterback play in this one at all, and this is one of the hardest games to pick of the week, if not the season, but Cam Newton return looming, paired with how well the 49ers defense is playing, I think this is set up to be Kyle Allen's worst game of the year, opening the door for Cam to return as the starter in the next couple of weeks. But don't be surprised if we get a rematch of these two teams down the road with Cam Newton assuming his starting position as the Panthers quarterback. But in this one, 49ers win 23-16.
Broncos at Colts. The Broncos defense looked good a few games until the Chiefs came to town, and really it's Joe Flacco who came up really small in that game last week, which then put the defense in a lot of really bad situations. Unfortunately for Flacco, this Colts defense just got the heart and soul of their unit back last week in Darius Leonard, and he made a huge difference in the defense as a whole. I'm actually picking up this defensive special teams up in fantasy for the next few weeks because the schedule is pretty favorable. I've been impressed with how well oiled this Colts machine has been, and I expect them to take care of a lesser team at home like this. The only hesitation I have is that Raiders game still lingers, and after beating two of the top three AFC teams, I think that they could fall victim to a trap game like this where they get a little bit complacent, and maybe this week they pat themselves on the back once or twice. But I can't pick the Broncos. I'm staying safe here and picking the Colts because I think that the Broncos sent a message to their team by moving Emmanuel Sanders to the 49ers, and the Drew Lock countdown is officially on. Colts win 28 to 20. And real quick, let me go over the week seven Pick'em Group recap. Sorry, I, I'm pretty sure I forgot to do it last week. This whole pulling an all-nighter on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning thing, kind of messing with my brain a little bit. But let's get into week seven here real quick. Last week was probably my best week overall. And if I didn't get cute with the Jets upset over the Patriots, then I would have been tied for the most picks last week with the nine other guys that picked 12 games right. I, that's pretty insane to me. Maybe the games are getting a little bit easier to pick here. We'll see if that carries over here in week eight. And then overall, we had a three-way tie between Kid Tay, Buck, Philip Rivers' 15th kid. I love that name. And Aridon, or maybe it's AA Redon. Shout out to you guys that did well last week and the guys that are doing well overall. If you want to join the Pick'em group, it's free. It's on ESPN. You can either search for NFL RT or there will be a link in the description below. At this point, we're just doing it for fun. But don't forget the guys that have been in it all year. I am giving away a $100 NFL shop gift card to the overall Pick'em group leader at the end of the season. So don't forget to set those picks each and every week. Browns at Patriots. If the Browns want some goddamn respect, this is the game to do it. Those flashy offseason moves, they'll get you to September, but it's time to start showing up in these big matchups. Sadly, this Patriots defense is just too good, and I've lost a lot of faith in the Browns team thus far. The only saving grace I have for them is that they got an extra week to prepare for the Patriots, and maybe Freddie cooked up something in the kitchens for them. Let's see what it did there. Problem is that the offensive line probably won't be able to block long enough for them to execute said game plan anyways. Now, the Browns secondary, they really needed that bye week to get healthy, but if Miles Garrett wants that Defensive Player of the Year award, then these are the games he needs to dominate. The matchup is there for him to thrive this week, but Belichick loves to take away your best player, so Olivier Vernon might end up being the one that needs to step up while Miles Garrett's getting chipped and triple teamed. But after watching the Patriots defense step on the throat of the New York Jets and even make Sam Darnold see ghosts, it's impossible to pick against this team realistically. I know I did it last week, but that was really just for shits and gigs because otherwise the Monday night game would not be very fun. I don't want to have to root for the Patriots on Monday night football in a game where they're clearly the better team, but I was actually pretty satisfied with the way that game turned out. Patriots win this one 31-21. And then on Sunday Night Football, we've got Packers and Chiefs. Hey, Aaron Rodgers finally had a breakout game for the 2019 season, and the wide receivers played so much better that they got a former first-round pick shipped out of town for the work that Kumro did on Gary on Conley. It's a shame because this was supposed to be Aaron Rodgers versus Patrick Mahomes, and Aaron Rodgers versus Matt Moore just doesn't have the same ring to it. But Mahomes or no Mahomes, there are a lot of weapons in this Chiefs offense to try and stop, and Matt Moore should feel the most supported that he's ever felt by a surrounding cast. Aaron Rodgers on primetime is usually peak AA run, but I'm actually not going to be surprised if Andy Reid used his extra long weekend as a mini bye week, cooked up a nice little game plan for this Packers defense. And it's likely the Chiefs don't try to get into shootouts while Mahomes is out and look to slow things down and allow their much improved defense to show what they can do. Much like the way that the Saints are executing without their starting quarterback. It's still probably not going to be enough. Packers win 34-26. And then on Monday Night Football, we've got Dolphins at Steelers. Now, this might be the worst Monday Night Football matchup ever, I don't know. We'll have to see which Steelers team shows up. The Dolphins, they played their best game of the year last week, though, and still lost. Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to try and mess up this tank if he keeps it up, but I think this team wants to lose, and if you want to lose, you're going to find a way to lose. The Steelers' defense has responded well to their situation on offense, and getting Mason Rudolph back should help balance things out a little bit. Apparently, though, Mason Rudolph has no memory of the Earl Thomas hit that landed him in the hospital, so, uh, yeah, it's good, I think, right? At least he's ready to get out there and take some more hits. If we've got to watch this one, I'd love to see the Steelers defense come out and dominate again. But in this next decade of football, I really want to see the Steelers move away from the three B's era, put that in their rear view, and I want to see more of a return to the steel curtain with Devin Bush leading the way. Steelers win this one 28-13. 
that's going to do it for me, guys. Please make sure that you hit that like button. Our goal each and every week has been a thousand likes, but we have not been able to hit that. So I'm going to just go ahead and drop it down to 500. I think that's a little bit more reasonable. I went back and looked at last year's and it was maxed out at 500. So let's keep it at 500 again this year, guys. Thank you guys all so much for showing up each and every week. I appreciate you liking, commenting, subscribing. Leave your picks in the comments below if you want. Don't be stingy with your likes in the comments too. If you see somebody with some good picks, go ahead and throw them a like in their comment too. Good luck to everybody's football team this week. There's no teams for me to jinx. And if you stayed all the way to the end last week, you know that I reverse jinxed the Eagles and it worked. So I might be trying to do that each and every week. So good luck to the bye week this week. And then stay tuned. I've got a lot of videos coming out this week. That's right. I've got multiple videos coming out in one week. Let's see how I do. I've got mid-season awards and predictions and then my mid-season mock draft. Stay tuned. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.